What's up, everyone? Welcome to the State Philly Sports History for December 31st, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. And if the sound's messed up, it's because I'm doing a little rearranging and, and doing some things in here. And I took the rug out, which was just an older rug anyway, and threw it out. And I feel as though it's echoing in here, but it could just be my imagination. So working on that. If it is echoing, let me know. But it's our last show of 2023. Tomorrow we start fresh with 2024 in a lot of ways. Looking forward to that. As always, let's start with our question of the day recap. And this one, whew, man, more, more said no than yes on this. But this caused a lot of good debate and sparked a lot of great discussions through the various platforms, including the text and voice line. Uh, but for the most part, you said no. You can't root for the Cowboys. A lot of people... We're like, oh, I can't bring myself to do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, people said no matter what. Um, Ike Reese, did not, I don't think, anyway, not because of my question, but even said that he doesn't care unless it means the Eagles get a playoff spot. He's not rooting for the Cowboys. Um, so many people I talked to in person said, no, they can't root for the Cowboys. Um, I don't, again, I don't know I agree with it. I, I really don't. I think you got to take away, take off the blinders and look at the big picture. And yesterday, even though it was the most screwed up way for them to win, the Cowboys win and it does help the Eagles. Now, regardless, you have to expect that the Eagles are going to do what they have to do anyway and win the last two games for the division. If they don't, then it's all a moot point. And it doesn't matter. They don't deserve to be there anyway. But to me, getting that number two seed, they needed that help because of the tiebreaker. And the Cowboys gave them that help. So now if they went out, they're the two seed, which to me is better for the team overall. you got to put the bias against the Cowboys aside. Um, and not often do I disagree with the, the, the voice of the people out there, but... I'm sorry, you guys are wrong this time. You had to root for the Cowboys yesterday. And the, again, it was the most screwed up way. I don't know why Dan Campbell didn't even just, why didn't he just send it into overtime? Um, the fact that they got it on it and then lost it on the, the tackle not reporting eligible. Uh, in looking at it, apparently there were two fouls on that play. Apparently the guy, the tackle that did report eligible was ended up not lining up as eligible. He lined up inside, which is a penalty. And the guy that did line up, hopefully you're following this, the guy that did line up and catch the pass did not report to, to the referee. And the referee kind of confirmed that after the game. But what a, what a shitty way to lose that game. However, the Cowboys winning does help the Eagles. Now, if the Eagles don't win the next two games, then, it's, again, it's a whole moot point, and there's, there's no reason... That we're having a different discussion about the Eagles if they don't win these next two games. But as it stands now, you win out, you're the two seed, you're guaranteed at least one, possibly two home. Uh, or no, I guess they would get. Yeah, I guess they would get two home playoff games then, possibly three, uh, as opposed to one. And now you're you're scrambling. So I get it. Everybody hates Dallas. But I think at this point of the season, you have to look big picture and take your blinders off. And the big picture was we had to root for the Cowboys. Now, I'm not sitting there saying you put your star shirt on and, and cheer for every touchdown. Not saying that, but I'm not disappointed. Um, I was kind of excited and happy when that didn't go through for, for the Lions. Um, I would have liked to have seen overtime, though, because I needed seven more yards out of Jameer Gibbs for my same game parlay to hit, but that's a whole another point. Uh, but again, good for the Eagles that the Cowboys won. Now it's up to them to take care of business. And if they don't, then that's we're having a whole different discussion tomorrow. Uh, but thanks, as always, for participating in the voice and text line, getting your, your, your thoughts and, and opinions to me. 
267-495-8531 gets you through voicemail, text. And again, you don't have to do it just on the question of the day. I've had a couple people still giving me their, their Festivus rants. So uh, whatever's on your mind, get it through. Once we start getting more consistent voicemails, a lot of people have been texting. But once I get consistent voicemails, I do want to start including them in as part of the show in the new year. So be sure to get that in. Uh, also, would like to possibly do a live show or two next year. That's sort of big goals up here for the new years uh but be sure to use that voice and text line 267-495-8531 uh programming note no new back to the future this week we've been, i've been telling you to go back to the archives and listen to some of the episodes that you haven't uh last august we did something on andrew bynum uh, until i did that i completely forgot just how much hype there was about the sixers signing him so go check that out, August 10th of last year, Back to the Future with a PH, wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. Be sure to like and subscribe, tell your friends, Grammy, Cousin Eddie, Uncle Joe, if you're out there, you're still listening, tell your friends, help spread the word, let's grow this thing to new heights in 2024. It's one of my New Year's resolutions is to really expand the reach of this podcast, but I can't do it without you. And I just want to say real quick, thank you for a great year. We had a lot of fun doing this again this year. Haven't missed a day since September of 2022. Don't plan on missing a day again uh, through 2024. But let's, again, let's grow this thing. See where we can take it. Uh, I got some things lined up with the Philly Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, that was one of the great things for, for me. Uh, as part of the podcast that came out of this this year, set up a partnership, and I'm actually really working with them. Uh, so as we get into that season, I'll, get, I'll be updating you and letting you know where things stand with that. Uh, I've been in contact over the break here with Ken. I uh, have an idea, so might even get you guys involved as far as nominating people. So stay tuned for different ways that we're going to be involved with the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame. But I couldn't have done it without you guys. So let's grow this. Spread the word. Like, subscribe. Do what you have to do. And, and, and let's just make this big. All right. Flyers in action tonight out in Calgary on the West Coast. Going to be pushing whether you're going to be able to stay up. They should. I think they start at 8. So it should be. Uh, it's like a 5 o'clock West Coast time game, I believe. Uh, so it should be over uh, before the New Year's. Uh, but they're looking to end the year on a good note. I'm telling you, get in, buy, buy in on the Flyers now. I mean, the price has gone up since the beginning of the season, but I've been telling you to buy low on the Flyers and buy low before 2024 comes because I'm sure that price is going to go up. Sixers lost a tough one, 105-92 last night to the Bulls. Just one of those games. It was a clunker. It was their third game in four nights. Uh, it was a back-to-back, -back, no Joe. And the Bulls, for whatever reason, have given them trouble, even dating back to last year. I remember the one game I went to last year with the kids. The, it was against the Bulls, and the Bulls beat them in a game where Joe didn't play. But it was just a clunker. These games happen. They're, they have a couple days now to get back. Due to the fact that they went 2-2 two and two without Joe, I would not be surprised if we see him on Tuesday against the Bulls again to enact a little bit of revenge just weird that they've lost two games to to the bulls this year um and then the bulls aren't the best team and i don't know whether it's um certain people on the bulls playing harder against the sixers sixers to try to prove their worth but i don't know but just a tough one and again it was one of those ones it just happens every now and then you just have clunkers uh, it happens to all teams especially when you're playing the third game in four nights have a couple days off now. Hopefully that gives Joe time to get better, get in action. We'll see him Tuesday night against the Bulls. I've been talking to you about buying low on the Flyers. Show your support for the Flyers. Go to phillygoat.com. They have that Quaker sweater, which, is, again, is another one of the highlights of the year for me for this podcast. We inspired Philly Goat to create a, a, a shirt. So go to Philly Goat. Get the Quaker shirt uh, with the 31 on the back from the Philadelphia Quakers. Get other Flyers gear. I've been telling you about the just the quality and, and selection of that. I'd like to think we had a say in the Mega John shirt getting made. They have that. Just a great organization, great company, and another one of those things is a highlight of just working with them this year. So go show your support for them. End the year. Go buy yourself some Philly gear. 
Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. That's phillygoat.com, promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off. Hook them up. And for the final time in 2020, 20, 20, I'll get it out. For the final time in 2023, help them out, help me out. More importantly, help yourself out. All right, now to this game. And we talked about the Cowboys winning, and now this sort of ups the ante now for this game. There's no margin for error. And I know a lot of the people that that reached out yesterday and that I spoke to were saying, ah, but if the Cowboys lost, it takes some of the pressure off. They could have won the division today with a game. And I think this team needs the pressure, to be completely honest with you. I think they have almost slept walk through this season. So they need sort of that that extra motivation, that playoff. Think about last year when they started losing a couple games when Jalen was out and the sense of urgency and all of a sudden everybody was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then they came in that game against the Giants. They clinched it and everything was fine. I almost get the sense that that is where this team is right now. So the Cowboys winning, obviously it helps with the two seed, but I think it gives them a little bit of like, all right, we don't want to let the Cowboys back in this and and have all of that. Then next week becomes like winner takes all. Like you have the Giants playing the Eagles up in the Meadowlands. And then I don't know where that Washington-Dallas game is, but then all of a sudden it gets – They'll probably put those games on at 4 o'clock, and then we have to wait around all day. So the best thing to do is just go out there today and just win. But I like the fact that they have the pressure on them. Uh, Zach Cunningham is doubtful, which is okay. Avante Maddox is playing. Nick Morrow is playing. Landon Dickerson is playing. Almost relatively healthy. And our record now, I'm going to give you my pick and break it down, but our record for the year is 10, 8, and 1. Uh, done much better this year than we have done last year. The spread is currently 12. It jumped up. I think it opened at like 10, and a, 10, 10 and a half. It's up to 12 as of 7.30 this morning. The over is 48. And I, I could easily see this playing out as it did last week where it's a tighter game than what it should be. The Eagles are playing tight and everybody is – comes out of this game, and we're still questioning what this team is. But the fact that they are fairly healthy for the first time since week two, and really the only one they're missing is Zach Cunningham, but then you have some other pieces, Shaq Leonard in there. So they are relatively healthy. I mean, as healthy as you could be in week 17. There's been so much chatter the past few weeks during the current slide. Uh, After last week's game, about Nick Sirianni and his being a hothead and the play calling, the defensive coordinator, the locker room, Jalen Hurts being a leader, A.J. Brown being a diva. All of a sudden now, I did not plan this. I feel like I'm sounding like Jason Kelsey at the the Super Bowl parade. Uh, But all of that, yes, that played a role in it. I mean, is Nick Sirianni a hothead? Yes. Does he need Big Dom in there to kind of rein him in? Yes. Has the play calling been suspect? Yes. Did they get better at it last week? Yes. Does it come down to execution? Absolutely. Is A.J. Brown a hothead? No. I think he's just trying to really not be what everybody's trying to make him out to be by staying quiet. I think he's doing the right thing. And by doing the right thing, people are getting on him. Is Jalen Hurts, could he be more vocal? Absolutely. Is he playing a little bit of tight with a little bit of tightness? Absolutely. I think all of that, the past few weeks, I I think it's been this week has been relatively quiet. There hasn't been much. There's been a lot of about AJ Brown. There was a little bit earlier in the week about Nick Sirianni. I feel as though this week has been relatively quiet, which means to me, this team is focused. If you think about early in the season, if you think about some of the things at the end of last year when everybody else with the media, the fans, everybody was panicking. There wasn't a lot of stuff coming out of that the Novacare complex, and I haven't heard much this week, which to me says maybe, just maybe, they are focused. They are all in on this game, and now the fact you got the Cowboys winning and almost added that extra pressure to it, this is do or die for this team, in my opinion. If they lose this game, they're not beating the Giants, 
and and they're going into limping into the playoffs. So I feel like this is do or die. This team is too good to die. Uh, we're going to find out, I think, if they're a contender. If they don't come out and take care of business today, they're not a contender. And like I said, this is do or die. And I think this is that this team's chance to silence the haters, to make a statement, to say, hey, don't forget about us. We are the defending NFC champions. And if this game is close, it means one of two things. A, they're not the team we thought they were. Or B, this thing is going to start snowballing. You you think it was kind of quiet this week, maybe because of the holiday and everything. If this game is close or, God forbid, they lose, this thing is going to snowball out of control. Option B is way worse than them not being this team. I think they are this team. I think they have the talent. I think they just haven't played to their their best game. I know we were talking <clears throat> excuse me a lot about that early in the season. Option B is way worse. We don't want this thing to snowball because if this thing snowballs, I, it, it goes deeper than this season. All of a sudden, people are questioning the coach. People are questioning the quarterback. And remember 20... The 2019 offseason, 2020 season, when we had Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson, Jalen Hurts, and everybody was thing was a whole mess with COVID. This is going to get worse than that. This team doesn't allow that to happen. The Cardinals are way worse than what the Giants are top to bottom, I feel. Maybe they're a little bit better at quarterback, but the talent level on this Cardinals team is not where it is on the Giants. Their run D is horrible. It does not take a rocket science scientists to figure out what you have to do to win this game. It doesn't take Bill Walsh to figure this out, Vince Lombardi to figure this out. The Eagles need to pound the rock, and I don't think anybody in that building is dumb enough to not pound the rock. I think Avante Maddox coming back provides a spark to the defense. I think him playing with the the combination of Bradbury, Keeley Ringo, and Eli Ricks is going to be good. They have a not the receivers on the Cardinals aren't the greatest, so it's going to allow them to get some confidence. This team is not done, as Doug Peterson used to say. They're not done yet. They're going to respond to the pressure. They're going to come out. They're going to show everybody they're the defending NFC champions for a reason. I still have a funny feeling if it's not Washington this week, it'll be, I believe they play Seattle the last week. San Francisco is going to lose one game. This team will get the number one seed. This playoffs will go through Philadelphia again, and we're going to see them. Today is the get right spot I've been calling for for about four weeks now, but I just, there's, there's just a sense of what's going on down in that building. This is where they get it right. The Eagles not only cover the 12, I would not be surprised if. If this thing goes over, I'm staying away from the total, but I think the I could see it going either way. But I think the Eagles score in the 30s. They might only give up 10 points. That's why I'm scared of the the over under. But the Eagles win. This is the type of game that's a get right spot. Message center. Let's go. Let's end this. Let's get back on track. Get right game in a big way. Eagles cover the 12. That's our official pick. That's my pick. Let's go. I could be way wrong. Could have a whole, again, a whole different discussion tomorrow. But that's what I'm thinking. I think this team is too good. And again, it's set up perfect. Run the ball. Set up Jalen. I still look for AJ to have a couple a couple deep bombs. I'd look for Smitty to get involved. I think it's going to be an overall get right spot for this offense. They're going to play it out. And it's going to be good for the Eagles. Take the Eagles minus the 12 points. Let's go. Be sure to check out my boys at the Clashing Conferences podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. They did a great job this week. Outside possibility, I might be on with them next week. I'll keep you posted as as we get to that. I might be on on Tuesday, uh, which they'll drop that on Thursday. So stay tuned for that. But that's the Clashing Conferences podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. All right. Today, we're going to go back to 1988 and on December 31st, 1988, the Eagles lost to the Bears 20-12 to in the NFC wildcard game, or as we all know it today, the Fog Bowl. Midway through the second quarter, Fog rolled into Soldier Field, 
And before that happened, though, the Eagles had shot themselves in the foot. Uh, There's so many missed opportunities between drop touchdown passes, fumble or uh, turnovers, uh, not picking up fourth downs, penalties, you name it. They <clears throat> just killed themselves there in the first half. Uh, but still, we're only down 17-9. to uh, The defense kind of kept them in it. Uh, once the fall came, though, it was a whole different ball game. The teams traded field goals in the second half. Randall still managed to throw for over 400 yards in that game. But the players all complained that it was hard to see the sidelines, the first down markers. It also didn't help. I completely forgot about this until... And I don't know if I forgot about it or I conveniently tried to block it out of my mind. But the Eagles were also wearing white jerseys that day. So that also added some a layer of whatever you want to adversity to the the fog to begin with also nobody could see more than like 15 yards i think they said in front and i think the fog hurt the eagles way more that day than it hurt the bears because they were a young team they were their first time in the playoffs and it goes back to me this the fog bowl if you think about, you want to talk about butterfly effects and and how things sort of, the, or we've been watching a lot of Back to the Future with the kids. So you want to talk about messing up the space time continuum? Go back to 1987 with that NFL strike, and that team missed four games or 25 percent of the season, where they could have grown and been able to maybe come overcome some adversity like this because they might have made the playoffs, likely would have made the playoffs the year before. Had it not been for the, the the replacement players, so I think the fog hurt that team because they were young. Uh, they got their jitters out there in the first half. The, to me, they outplayed the Bears in the first half of that uh, that game, and I think they would have gotten it right at halftime of that game because they were only down eight points. And the way the defense was playing, I think they would have gotten it together. The offense, Randall was was starting to click. You could see it, and, and I don't think they would have made the dumb mistakes. And that, to me, of all the years with the Buddy Ryan, 1988 was the year because they would have gone out to San Francisco the next week. And of all of Joe Montana's Super Bowl teams, that year was probably his worst. They struggled throughout the season that year. If you look back, that was they were uh, they weren't sure whether they wanted to put Steve Young in. There was the quarterback controversy. Uh, Joe Montana, Steve Young, they alternated. And it just was a hot mess in San Francisco. That was the team that could have gone out and knocked off the 49ers because they would have been rolling after that win in uh, Chicago and then go to the Super Bowl and play a Cincinnati team that won at the time. They were okay, but they weren't great. And the whole NFC was just dominating the AFC and Super Bowls then. So to me, that was the year. Still bitter about that to this day. Uh, But on this day, back in 1988, it was the Fog Bowl. The Bears beating the Eagles 20-12. to And to me, ending what could have been the Eagles' best and most legitimate shot to win a Super Bowl during the Buddy Ryan era. All right. Finally, our last top Philly sports moment of the year. Michael Lorenzen's no-hitter. In his second start with the team, and first home start, too, which was pretty cool. He threw 124 pitches, struck out five, four uh, walks in the Phil's 7 to nothing win over the Nationals. Game lasted only two hours and nine minutes. I remember we held the kids back from being in, going to bed because the game was going so quick so they could watch the end of it. But it just – and Rob Thompson was ready to pull him at one point, and, like, the last guy would have been his last batter because of his pitch count. Uh, I was the 14th uh, no-hitter in Philly's history. And unfortunately, I think he was not right ever since that because of so many pitches he threw. But it was one of the great, bigger moments of the Philadelphia sports year in 2023. That leads us into the question of the day. And obviously, get your Eagles picks to me as well. That's standard on game day, 267-495-8531. But I started this yesterday, but I really want to focus on today. What is your top Philadelphia sports moment of 2023? Get them into me, 267-495-8531. Let me know your thoughts. If you leave a voicemail, maybe you can start the new year off as a guest on the podcast. But on this day, back in 1988, 
It was the Fog Bowl. Eagles losing to the Bears 20-12. to We're taking the Eagles minus 12 today. I think they just come out and blow the Cardinals out. And, and it's I think it's going to be one of those ones that's a laugher. Be sure to check out Philly Goat for all of your Philly sports apparel needs. If you want to get through on the Texan voice line and still give me your opinion and tell me how I'm wrong about how we should have rooted for the Cowboys yesterday, 267-495-8531. It's not too late to do that. We've got one more day to air your grievances for 2023 because we turn the page over and start fresh tomorrow. Be sure to check out the August 10th Andrew Bynum Back to the Future. If you're going out tonight, be safe. Don't do anything stupid. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. And for the last time in 2023, until next time, go Birds.